Eric Dolf covering my name, Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live and, of course, the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. Now, I wanted to take a little bit of time with you guys today and share with you a little bit about the Jewish holiday that we have already begun here after Yom Kippur, and that is, of course, the Feast of Tabernacles, or Yom Sukkot, as we say in Hebrew. And it is a time of reflection, a time of remembrance, a command that God gave Moses uh, for the children of Israel over in the book of Leviticus chapter uh, 23. And we're going to go into that in just a moment. But the very word that we call uh, Sukkot is actually the plural for the word sukkah. Sukkah is the little, uh, if you've ever been to Israel, it's a little tiny uh, tent-like structure that a lot of people build outside their homes. They normally put palm branches and different things like that over over the sukkah as part of the commandment that we get from Moses in Leviticus 23. But a lot of times, most of us never really think of the what the symbology is behind uh, the whole idea of Yom Sukkot. Now, there are many Christians that do have a, a very good understanding as far as that being the indwelling, the Spirit of God dwelling within us. But it's even deeper than that. It's not only just the Spirit of God in us, but it's also us in Him, as we find that Yeshua speaks of in John chapter 15. And it even goes further than that. And I'm going to share some of those insights with you today, and I think it'll be a blessing for you. If we look over at Leviticus uh, in chapter 23, and actually I'm a little bit further down than where I'd planned on being, but I can start there. Let me just quickly let you know, though, this is where God gives a command when we're in Leviticus, actually beginning around verse 33 up here, where the Lord spoken to Moses saying, okay, speaking to the children of Israel, saying the 15th day of this seventh month, again, seventh month, it's not, so many people call this uh, the the new year, uh, Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year. It's actually the beginning, it's, it's the ending of the harvest and the beginning of a new harvest would really be the more proper way, but you couldn't have it the seventh month, which is Tishri in Hebrew. Uh, and and how do you equate that to Nisan 1? Uh, so the true new year is actually Nisan 1. But it is a new year of a new harvest, a new beginning of harvest. And this is probably one of the reasons why we celebrate this in modern times as the Rosh Hashanah, the head of the head of the year, uh, because it is the beginning of the new harvest season that will begin. But we do this very interesting thing inside of Israel, and of course many Jews celebrate this around the world in commemoration to the commandment that God gave Moses uh, back in Leviticus 23, as well as even in Zechariah. We find out that this will be something that will be celebrated throughout the millennial reign uh, as well. Uh, so as we look into this, so God gives a command about this, about this celebration, and on the first day shall... Be a holy convocation, you shall do no several work therein. In other words, we're not going to work. It is a Sabbath. In fact, it'll be uh, Sabbath. You'll, you'll, you'll not work during this time at all there. So you have, or the first day is the Sabbath and the last day is the Sabbath. Actually, I apologize. These are the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocation to an, to an offering uh, to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And I have a feeling that it has a lot, lot more to do with than just offering an animal sacrifice, but the fact that what? It is the Spirit of God that dwells inside of us, that fire of God, the very thing that he put inside of Adam and Eve when he breathed into their nostrils. And what do we get? We have Ish and Isha. And that, by the way, if you take the two words, Ish being man and Isha being woman, but it's made up of what? It's made up of the word fire, Ish. Both their names have that in there. But if you take the Yod and the He out of there, you have only fire with both of them. But the Yod and the He gives you Yah, which is God himself. So it is the Spirit of God or the fire of God that was dwelling inside of Adam and Eve when God first created them in the beginning. And I think this has to do with the offering made by fire. It is something that God is wanting to once again place inside of us. So he says, beside the Sabbath of the Lord and beside your gifts and beside all your vows, Beside all your free will offerings which you give unto the Lord, also in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when you shall have gathered, gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath, and you shall take you on the first day of the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palms, palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. Now, I just love this, because for me, I'm very much into looking into the, to the, the symbology behind this. And as we all remember, Yeshua says what? He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. 
So there's a reason why we see this dwelling within and we see all these, these branches that are being spoke about here. But what's really in interesting though is the bows of the thick trees. Now in Hebrew, the word there is entwined. The trees that are entwined together. Now is that, could that be, uh, you know, where you see two trees wrapping around each other? Or is it the fact that they're entwined at the roots? That's a good question. Can't really say I know the answer to that, but it is an entwined tree. And it is something that reminds me of a very image because this is something that has a lot to do with this. Reminds me of our DNA itself, something that is entwined within you. And of course, the, the rushes that are also spoken of here is another thing that makes me think of that. But when we go back to Leviticus, he says to uh, the branches of the palm trees and the boughs of thick trees. So you're going to take the bow out, but that thick tree or that entwined tree is what that is supposed to come from and the willows of the brook of course there again the willows of the brook all of this keeps making me think about our dna and you'll see why in just a moment and you shall rejoice before the lord your god seven days and you shall keep it a, a, a feast unto the lord seven days in the year and it shall be a statue forever in your generations you shall celebrate in the seventh month and you shall dwell in booths seven days and all that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths, that your generation may know that I am the children of Israel to, to dwell in booths. When I brought them out of the land of Egypt, I am the Lord your God. And Moses declared this unto the children of Israel, the feast of the Lord. Now, as I said, there's so much more that this means than what we just kind of take for granted. And so I wanted to share with you. I want you to look over here. And now we're going over here to the book of John. All right, so we go over here to John chapter 15 here, starting with verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. I want you to keep that in mind. This is why when I'm looking at what we're talking about from Leviticus 23, and he speaks about this intertwine this thick tree as you read in English the the entwined tree or the or the rushes so much of this thing so makes me think of our DNA that's within inside of us so he says now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine no more can you except you abide in me and let me tell you something you don't think the Jews couldn't understand that concept of what he was saying I mean, they're going down, taking the palm branches and stuff, according to Levitical law. They're cutting the branches off and bringing them back to make a sukkah as a type, as a memorial of what the children of Israel went through during the wilderness journey, how they lived in the sukkah, how they lived in these little tiny little tents, always moving about. And, you know, they had a hard. But he's also showing you a type here that they're cutting this down to celebrate uh, the, the Sukkot. The Feast of Tabernacles, and by the way, those of you that remember, remember when they were saying, uh, his brethren were going to go up to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles, and Yeshua said, oh, I'm not going right now, it's not my time. You ever wonder why he said it wasn't his time yet? It's an indwelling. But it's not just him living in you, but it's you living in him. And this is why we must also, as a type the sukkah is a type of us dwelling within him and he within us. But as he states here to them, abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. Because he was showing them, they've cut the, the branches off. And now that branch can no longer produce anything, right? No more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you cannot do nothing. And here we've got the Feast of Tabernacles as a clear type of what the true indwelling, us in him, in the sukkah, and him in us. We can go in there all day long, but unless he comes and dwells within us, then our branches are dead. It's just like the sukkah that you might have built outside of your home and you've laid the branches on there. Those branches will die. But if he's also dwelling within you, then it will not die because he says, I am the vine and you are the branches. 
If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. In other words, after Yom Sukkot passes, what do we do? Well, our palm branches and everything, they dry, they wither, they can't bear fruit no more. Why? Because we cut them out of the tree. But we take them, we bundle them up, we take them down and we burn them. You ever live in Israel, you'll see a lot of that going on, especially in Jerusalem. You know why? Because, my brothers, sisters, you may be dwelling within the sukkah, but is the vine dwelling within you? You see, it's one thing for us to go in the sukkah, the tabernacle, and you can go in there and you can worship all you want. It is a festivity of praise and worship. But you need the vine within you. The very vine that made up the branches that you placed on top of your sukkah need to be inside. You need to be part in that vine itself. Now, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Notice how he keeps giving that analogy. Yes, you in there, but also him in you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you that you, that your joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends, and if you do whatsoever I command you, henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends for as long, for all things I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. And yes, he would lay down his life. And the thing is, is even there, the very fact that these branches that we cut down also shows that laying down of a life. Now, i got to share with you something else that's very interesting, and it may not seem like it fits here, but it does. This is Psalm chapter 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. All right? Notice, he meditates in his law of the Lord day and night. And he shall be what? Like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. When are we supposed to be gathering these branches off of the trees? At the harvest. The fruit in his season. At the harvest time, we go and we cut down these branches out of the tree. But as soon as we cut the branch down and everything, the, the, the branch can no longer bring forth the fruit. But if we abide in the sukkah, in Christ, if we abide in the vine, we shall bring forth that fruit. See? And what do we do when we're doing this? We're meditating day and night. All right? Meditating. What does that meditating do? It meditating stimulates your DNA. Encoded on your DNA is, you know, I mean, let, me, let me put it to you like this. When I was born, I looked like my dad. You know why I look like my dad? Because I got part of his DNA inside of me. And if the DNA of my father can cause me to physically look like him, what about encoded on my DNA in here and in these little strands everywhere? What about something else? What about my ancestors way, 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 way back? You have written on your DNA all kinds of things. And the word of God, what did God say? Write it upon the tables of your heart. Not, not you write it. God said, I'll write it upon the tables of their heart. Why? Remember me telling you guys about the transplants, uh, the patients that get hearts and stuff. The one little girl that got a heart, a little girl, hers come, I think, from a nine-year-old girl and an eight-year-old girl got the heart. The nine-year-old girl had been murdered. But when she got the heart of the nine-year-old girl, she got the memories of that girl and they were able to identify her attacker and prosecute and put the man in prison and what the little girl said just before she died through the DNA. So the word of God is written on the table of your heart. No wonder why God says in his word here in Psalm, meditate day and night on what? On the law of the Lord. Because it's actually in you. 
All right, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. You know, I want to be in a sukkah that is alive. I want to be in Christ, entwined into the vine as the branches, right? As we see the, the analogy that's given to us uh, by Paul in the book of Romans, you know, he talks about the wild olive branches. Yeah, you can cut them out, but they won't bear anymore. But, you know, as the Jews, you are the original branches that can be regrafted in again. The wild branches were grafted in, which is the Gentiles. But the originals, we can be regrafted right back into our same vine, our same tree, our Lord. Right now, I've got to share one more thing with you. And this, again, may not seem like it goes with Sukkot. It may seem like it doesn't go with the Feast of Tabernacles, but I think it does. This is in Joel's, chap Joel's prophecy, chapter 2. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord hath done great things. Be not afraid, you beast of the field. For the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth its fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he giveth you what the former rain in just measure, and he causeth to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain at the first. Now, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but let me just kind of share with you real quick here as we look at this. Let's just find real quick. Oh, here we go, right here. All right. It doesn't say anything about former rain. He says what he does, he gives them, you see, he says, as I've given to them the teaching. He's giving the former teaching. Now, it does use the word rain eventually, Geshem right here, but not at the first. And what kind of rain is it? It is a teaching rain. Not, there's no word there saying former in here. See? Veyored lechem geshem more. All right? And, and they shall, and shall come down to them the teaching rain. You know what it is? It's a restoration is what we're looking at. And that teaching rain is what's going to come down. And again, it's at a harvest time. And the floor shall be full of corn and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and shall praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Again, this scripture here in Joel is at the time of the Feast of Tabernacles. It's at the time of a harvest. And God is talking about restoring back to Israel that former rain. All right? And as we look back here in verse 23, Be glad then, you children of Zion, rejoice. Let me read it to you from King James here. Be glad then, you children of Zion, rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Now, I'm going to go a little bit further with you on this. Do you realize the former rain is what Moses taught? It was a teaching rain. It's what Moses began to teach the children of Israel. But God says he's going to give the former rain moderate. He gave it moderately. And he will cause to come down to you the rain, that teaching rain, the latter rain. Do you realize, you ever notice what happens here? Um, let me see if we have, yes. Back up. All right, so we see the caterpillar and the palmer worm. My great army which sent among you, and you shall eat plenty and be satisfied, and shall praise the name of the Lord your God that hath, that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall, shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and there is none else. And my people shall never, never be ashamed. Now, in the Hebrew, we don't go to verse 28, but we, we will, I'll switch it over to the next chapter for you because in English, we stay in the same chapter. 
All right, it'd be verse 28 in the King James Version Bible. But let's continue on. It shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids. In those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in heavens and the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. And the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion in Jerusalem there shall be those that escape as the Lord has said and among the remnant those whom the Lord shall call. Now did you notice though what comes down? Blood and fire. You remember Revelation 11, those two witnesses? They have power to turn the waters to blood. They call down fire that it destroys their enemies. And then we wonder about who they are. And I, I do appreciate, I do get, you know, I know some people believe it is Enoch, and I'm not going to discount the possibility of it being Enoch, and I can't say that Enoch wouldn't actually come as well. I trust it's been a blessing for you. We thank you for watching. If it blesses you, the work that we're doing here, consider supporting the work we do. You can do that by visiting our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org or IsraelReturns.com. IsraelReturns is .com, not .org. But IsraeliNewsLive is .org and IsraelReturns.com. Shalom and thank you and God bless you.